The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell live. We are live in studio here to talk about health and your options and try and apply as Dr. Rosell says it, but he's out of town today and we are at a different time. So a lot of different things going on, but that's okay. I'm not in the studio alone. So we're going to get to that in just a moment. Uh, In case you are wondering, yes, this is one of the Saturdays that we're moving over for the Redskins. And so this is actually going to be recorded and uh, always and available on the YouTube channel. So if you miss it today, this week, you can always go to the YouTube channel, Dr. Tom Roselle Live, and pick it up from there. And also check our website, rosellecare.com, R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com. And that also has the other dates, the other October, November, and December dates when we will be doing this at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday instead of doing the Sunday program. So there's some on Sundays and there's some on Saturdays. And with Dr. Rizal being out of town, this is Stephanie Pina, licensed acupuncturist and naturopath, filling in for him once again, taking over the station. And uh, luckily, I don't have to do it alone. Uh, live on the air is going to be the guest for this Wednesday's um, lecture that we're going to have live at the studio, uh, live at the office uh, at 7 p.m. And we're going to be discussing a topic that is increasing in prevalence. We hear we have a lot of patients that come in and people that are interested in it. And I feel like they don't get any of the results that they need when they try to do it alone. And they don't get any of the results that they need when they can't quite figure out with all the information online. So we have an expert here for you to discuss um, something that's between... I think 7 to 15% of the U.S. population is dealing with, and that is irritable bowel syndrome, IBS. So joining me uh, in studio today and your host on Wednesday is Mary Jane Bembernick. Bembanick. Bembanick. <laughs> that was the one I was worried about. <laughs> and uh, essentially, we are going to go through IBS. So welcome to the studio. Um, thank you so much, Stephanie. I'm very honored to be here today. All right. Mary Jane is going to be presenting um, on Wednesday night. That's going to be October the 18th at the Rizal Center for Healing. So if you need to register for this class, uh, which I think it's going to be a pretty popular one, so you're going to want to make sure you reserve your seat, you have two ways to do this now. You can actually call the office number at 703-698-7117, or you can actually register on the RizalCare.com website. Um, if you click on Health Education Events, uh, there's a big gray button that says Register Now, and that will get you through as well too and then the girls will confirm uh, and be able to save your seat for that 7 p.m. lecture and if you have any questions for us today you can always give us a call here at 1-888-630-9625 again that's 1-888-630-9625 all right let's get into the gritty stuff irritable bowel syndrome Obviously, it's it's something that we have a lot of patients that come in, like I said, and it can almost be a, di- a diagnosis of exclusion, exclusion, and you just can't quite figure out what's going on. And symptom wise, it's really the only thing that conventional medicine uses to come in. So tell me a little bit about the type of patient that's coming in, whether they've been diagnosed with IBS or they're kind of on that borderline saying, I have these symptoms, but I don't really know what to do. Um, Most of the people that um, do come in um, would be women because there's twice the number of women that have LBS as men. But the statistics could be as high as 15% of the population. So that's a huge number. And um, I think, you know, people come to us because they're just so tired of being miserable um, because they can either have like two types of IBS, either constipation or diarrhea. And, you know, either one of them is a quality of life issue. So really we're talking about someone coming in with significant abdominal cramping, discomfort in the digestional tract, like you mentioned, constipation, diarrhea, or alternating, um, or and other 
basically stool and bowel issues as well, too. There may be mucus in there. There may be inflammation. But it's also ruled out other physical symptoms, like when we hear a lot about Crohn's and IB uh, and ulcerative colitis and a little bit more serious type or diverticulitis as well, too, the information that's going on that they can visually see in the gut as well, too. What are some of the things that we look for in patients that um, help us kind of put them on the right track? Um, uh, Diet. You know, diet is always, you know, where we want to go first because sometimes it could be just as simple as eliminating a food group. Um, It could be gluten. Um, It could be dairy. Um, It could be whole milk. Um, It could be yogurt. Um, It could be eggs. Um, You know, everybody's different. But we have to basically discover what it is for that specific person in front of us as to if they have a link with a food group. So we know when patients come in, we're looking at the triad of health, like all everyone is familiar with, that biochemical, structural, mental, emotional aspects of it. And so if we break that down, you know, structurally, we know we, we're working with the colon, usually the large intestine, the, the lower part where we basically this job is storage, essentially, because all those minerals and everything and nutrients have been absorbed in the small intestines have been broken down. And, but is IBS, even though we focus so much on the digestive tract, is it only related to the gut? Is it just a digestive issue or do we see this affecting other areas of the body as well? Um, yes, Um I think the vagus nerve could be part of the structural um, issues that need to be resolved, and um, that could be helped with maybe a chiropractic adjustment or a series of treatments. Okay. You know, but sometimes, too, you know, that valve is either opened or closed. So it just, you know, needs to make that um, a little bit more flexible in its operation. So we're talking about that that connection basically between the small intestine and the large intestine. And there's a little flap that should open and close when food's kind of processing through called the ileocecal valve. And sometimes that can help if, if things are going too fast or too slow through, we get back up. And every time you think about this, not only does the nervous system need to help out with the gut, but basically the digestive tract has its own nervous system as well. So this can definitely play a part in any kind of healing process that involves normal defecation and bowel movements. So um, one of the things, too, that's always interesting when you think about structurally and you brought up chiropractic is, you know, we have a lot of patients that come in that doesn't realize that, you know, the gut where all this great nutrients are supposed to be absorbed, if it can't get it around into the blood system, to the the rest of the body, to the tissues, to the organ systems, they're not going to function properly. So really, it's the be-all, end-all starting point of any kind of chronic illness, but definitely even acute illnesses as far as as bringing things up to a head and really having a starting place. So you see and work with patients basically reviewing their diet, reviewing what's going in and what's coming out. Um, Are you seeing more of a prevalence lately of people coming in with digestive issues, whether it's related to IBS or it's related to other chronic injuries as well, too, or or not being able to heal, that they're coming in with these kind of abnormal symptoms of gas and bloating and indigestion and even up to poor sleep as well, too, because they're awake with heartburn. And, you know, what's really interesting is um, when I do a initial assessment um, for a new client that comes to see me. When we get to digestion, where we talk about the upper digestion and the lower digestion, um, a non-IBS person, when I'm asking them the questions, when we have the discussion, the answer is like, no, 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 not applicable. So I know, you know, we're not really focusing on um, digestion or IBS um, issues, but when I have a, a patient in front of me that is struggling, that is challenged, um, you know, with either constipation or diarrhea, we have a, like a dialogue. You know, they have a lot to share with me about, you know, when the symptoms happen, you know, what they're feeling and how it presents in their body. So we know a lot of people when they come in, if they've gone to, say, their primary care doctor and they've had issues with diarrhea, constipation, or even just the cramping and inflammation, they're looking for answers. Did I eat something wrong? Did I get food poisoning? Is it something more? Um, they, some of them might have come in after they've done some screening, like uh, and like colonoscopies and stuff as well, too, and that changes up everything. 
when they come in, really the only thing that that's left out there for them is medications that essentially are treating some of these symptoms, correct? Correct. And I think one of the most, um, you know, popular, um, um, I guess, product that the physician would recommend to their patient is over-the-counter fiber. And um, for most people, you're just basically um, putting on a Band-Aid. You're not really looking at the cause. You're just um, treating the symptoms. And at the Roselle Center for Healing, you know, we want to actually do the investigation and find out what the cause is. Yeah, and when we look at some of the other medications, the prescription ones, really, it's more of a Band-Aid, too, because they're sitting there as an antispasmodic. So now you're stopping the digestive tract from cramping and spasming, but you're also stopping the normal flow of bowel and then basically that can also be, uh, some of these medications have opioid type of receptor effects as well too, which go to the brain and, and kind of cause some other side effects, which are not so pleasant as well, uh, really affecting quality of life and everything else that's going on. And we're going to get into the other effects, kind of quality of life issues that, you know, people don't think of how much would not being able to go to the bathroom or having digestive issues affect your everyday being. You're able to do really to work and, and play and do things. But we're going to do talk about that, and Mary Jane's going to talk about it more on Wednesday night, the 18th, at the Results Center Feeling, when she talks about IBS as well, too. When we think about a person that's coming in, and sometimes one of the funnier aspects of what we're talking about is the stool, or all the little mnemonics that go with it, um, more and more people are coming in, and they're becoming familiar with what they call the Bristol stool chart. And what's interesting is you can you can Google search it. People have kind of come in. So there's six different types of stool on there. So basically what we have to tell people is, yep, you have to get a little bit more involved in the bathroom, just like how you brush your teeth and floss your gums. Well, now you have to take a little look on there too. Explain to me a little bit about what you see kind of on the Bristol stool chart and how that helps us with diagnosing what possibly possibly might be going on with this patient. Yeah, um, I do find it's quite amazing. There are um, a lot of patients that I talk to, they have no idea exactly. I mean, they know, but they don't really look at their stool. And it's really like something that you should start observing. So, so you have like more indication as to when you eat X, you know, what happens afterwards, you know, the cause and the effect. But basically, you know, going back to the Bristol stool chart, um, primarily like four is the norm. You know, you want the stool to more or less be smooth like a sausage or also like a banana. Banana is like another analogy. You want it to be like that, you know, maybe like like a hot dog. And um, not to be like too descriptive, but you want it to be fairly clean. You know, you don't want to use like a whole roll of, toilet paper, you know, when you're in there. Um, and another thing, too, is just, you know, use the analogy of a dog if, or a pet, you know, whatever you may have. You want it to be kind of, you know, very, very clean and also very consistent from day to day. Yeah, so we're all about having to take care of our animals and looking for that and dealing with that. But when it comes to our own, you know, it's yes. a little different. So everyone's going to have homework after this show. So that way you can come to Wednesday and say, Mary Jane, um, I have a, a type two. What does that mean? So she's going to go over all of that. So the good thing is that we're going to go over this and some more issues with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, because it's so prevalent and people really don't understand what's going on, what's normal with their digestive tract and how that can affect the rest of their health as well, too. We're going to be back in just a couple of moments. Thank you. This is Dr. Tom Roselle Live on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Dr. Tom Roselle Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome back to Dr. Tom Roselle Live. We are live in studio today talking about an interesting little topic called IBS, Irritable Bowel Syndrome. I am here with Mary Jane and we're going through this because she's going to be your lecturer on this Wednesday, October 18th at the Rizal Center for Healing, going over the same issue. Um, and the stuff that we're talking on today um, is just the, just the beginning, really, because there's a lot of in-depth details that, you know, when we sit down one-on-one -on -one with anyone, we really need to know about them in order to create an individualized treatment because really the way that they heal can be very different uh, from another person. So we're going to go more into IBS now. If you have a question and want to call in, 
feel free to give us a call here. The number is 1-888-630-9625. Again, that number is 1-888-630-9625. Let's talk a little bit about the fact that with all these digestive issues and the fact that, you know, it's occurring multiple times throughout the day, but quality of life is a main issue as well, too. And the we don't think about it until it's probably happening to us and we start to realize that quality of life isn't so good because we have to be the ones that are looking around for that bathroom and we're planning our trips around where where the nearest, nearest facility is and am I prepared for everything? And, and even I've had a patient who had IBS type symptoms and was afraid to travel because she had to think so far ahead that, oh my goodness, what if I'm on a plane and I can't deal with this? What am I going to do? What kind of a situation? So this is a pretty common thing. So Mary Jane, tell us a little bit about how you've seen um, quality of life affected with an IBS patient. Um, Stephanie, you you are correct. Um, You know, the people that do suffer with IBS, I think the most important room in the house is the bathroom. And, um, And when you're out at a restaurant, where is the bathroom? At your place at work, where is the bathroom? Because um, if you do have the IBSD, which is the diarrhea, you know, you may have to go four times a day, you know, six times a day. So you want to have easy access to the bathroom when you need it. And then also, too, on the flip side of that, if you have IBSC, you know, with the constipation, when that urge comes, you want to be able to know that, yes, there's a bathroom. When it comes, I can let it out. But but if you don't have a bathroom available to you, you're just going to be keeping it in longer. And then the thoughts are going to be going through your head like, I had it, but I couldn't do anything about it. Like, when it, when is it going to come again? And so you start playing that old... Um, record in your head like over and over and over again, which kind of um, is going to prevent you to having the release because you've set up that anxiety. Right. Yeah. And then even leading to that, I mean, the anxiety and even depression that goes along with it, because a lot of times this is a chronic illness, like right. and like a, a lot of chronic illnesses where there's an emotional aspect that needs to be addressed that doesn't get addressed through medications. And when you look at this, if if that record is playing over and over again, what kind of life can you live? Because basically you're you're waiting for that next tune to come up and then you're running to the bathroom again. Plus, if you're in that social situation, you probably don't feel as comfortable as you'd normally be. So your personality is going to change. The events that you want to do are going to change. Uh, a lot of different things that you have to think about. Like, So, yeah. And also, too, like um, in this area, you know, the Baltimore um I mean, excuse me, not really the Baltimore, but, you know, the Northern Virginia, you know, D.C., with our traffic. You know, you could think that you're going to be home in like 20 minutes, and that 20 minutes could take an hour and 15 minutes. And so what happens, you know, if you feel the urge? So so in this area, we have to add traffic as another cause of factor of IBS and the anxiety and stuff that goes along with it. I think I think there needs to be like a bumper sticker that says that. (laughs) Right. Absolutely. And then we can it says Roselle Center for Healing for questions and answers. (laughs) Yes. And also take your call on traffic. There's no there's no um, bathroom on the beltway. Right. Yeah. Right. That's that's the next hole. Right. (laughs) So really, when you think of it. Yeah. I mean, it can totally affect causative life. And then if you think about it, also a job. If you're, you know, we have a lot of teachers that come in and I feel bad for them because what's interesting is they will come to us and say, not only is diet a hard thing to work with because they have such limited amount of times to eat and they don't have time to prepare everything and get everything done. And then if they do have time, they're trying to run to the bathroom and depending on where their classroom is compared to where the bathroom is, they have to decide, am I going to eat or am I going to go to the bathroom? So All these job requirements that have us sitting at desks and not moving, which movement obviously helps out with the digestive tract too. And just like things like exercise and yoga that has, that can be put in there that can kind of compress and contract the digestive tract so that you get better movement. All these things, if they, if you can't do them because you're scared to do them or there's anxiety or depression going on and you don't want to do them, that's not exactly a healing situation either. And also too, a long line, um, you know, with, um, the teachers, hydration is very important, um, especially if you tend towards the um, the diarrhea, you know, IBS. Um, a lot of, I mean, excuse me, the constipation. A lot of times, um, the more water that you drink can um, can loosen up the stools. 
What do you think about it? It could be both, actually, because with the diarrhea, if you're losing valuable fluids as another exactly. asset, exactly. Um, and you're losing electrolytes that essentially are, you know, your muscles need that to help maintain contraction, but you don't want necessarily to become dehydrated as well, too. So either either aspect of it. And then if you're going back and forth, there's there's a no winning situation. So definitely part of it, too. Now, we also see if you think about talking about anxiety, people who are getting, if they get anxious, like if they're going to present, their digestive tract gets those neurological symptoms and those neurochemicals that are basically going, you know, maybe, maybe we do need to move stuff now, which can be completely normal stress response, but to what extent? So we know that there's a brain gut connection. And I think this is one of the anniversaries of Agile's health from one of the years in the past where we talked exactly about this brain gut connection, how important it is since that digestive tract really has to monitor some of the same chemicals that are going on in the brain as far as the way we break things down, the way we function on an everyday basis. We're going to go to a quick break. The show is going very quickly here. So when we come back, we're going to talk some more, get more into some of these details, possibly a little dietary stuff. And what can we start to think and do to help us with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome? This is Dr. Tom Rosell live on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome back to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. We are live in studio talking about IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and all the different types that go along with it, and why so many people are coming in with these symptoms that are just not being fixed by either medications or their own dietary changes but they really need a little extra help understanding what is going on. And the perfect way to do that is one, listen to this show and also tell anyone else that you know that has these symptoms, but also to come to the lecture on this Wednesday night, October the 18th. Uh, and Mary Jane is going to be there as your host going through multiple aspects of IBS from diagnosing to treating to what we see on an everyday basis. So one of the greatest things is that Mary Jane is here for the first time. So I want her to explain a little bit about how she got into becoming a nutritionist and her backstory of nutrition and why uh, it's really important that you're seeking out the right type of help for this uh, particular illness or any uh, time you're working on diet. Um, yes. Um, so my background is um, I do have a master's um, and MS in nutrition and integrative health. And that credential um, allowed me to become a certified nutrition specialist. And since I live in Maryland, I am also a licensed nutritionist to practice in the state of Maryland and also, you know, um, in Virginia. And my journey is um, probably a little bit different than the patients that I see because um, I didn't really have anything like acute that I had to be fixed immediately that I was like struggling with. But, um, my nutrition path, it just, it's, it's continually to evolve. And I think that, you know, as I age and as I learn more, you know, it's continually changing. But to be perfectly honest with you, um, what I eat now is totally different than what I ate eight years ago. And also since I've been at the Roselle Center and I'm being, I'm coming up on my two year, um, anniversary in December. And what I eat now is very different than what I eat, you know, two years ago. So I really do. I have implemented, you know, the program that has been developed, you know, with success from um, Dr. Tom Rosell and also from um, Sue Rosell. Um. Well, and I think what's interesting is, and I give you and Sue a lot of credit because when we have people come in and see us, you know, they're, they're seeing me for the acupuncture side. Uh, they come in to see the chiropractors for the adjustments and manipulations and different types of treatments. And, you know, we really pull everything together. So we're looking at all aspects of health and healing in order to best serve the patient. You know, they can make the appointments and come and get adjusted. They can make the appointments and lay on my acupuncture couch and, and, and sit back for 25 minutes and sometimes take a nap and give themselves some you time that I call it therapeutic napping because they're, they could do regular napping at home. Um, but when it comes to dietary changes and we're not talking about just people coming in that says, Hey, I want to lose some weight type of dietary changes. We're talking about stuff that is really about 
I want to change my lifestyle so that I don't have this inflammation. I don't have this chronic issue. I want to prevent something as well, too. That's the toughest part because they can come to us for the appointment, but then they leave. You're telling them to do something that they're going to have to do multiple times throughout the day that they can easily cheat on because no one's looking at them going, oh, well, this meal I'll eat good and this one I'm going to eat a little bad or I'm on the road. How do I do this? And so you guys do a really great job of working with the patients to kind of say, well, what kind of lifestyle are you living right now? And, you know, and that can be something starting as basic as a diet diary just to, to help the person recognize what the heck they're doing and what are they eating because a lot of people just eat and they don't even realize what they just ate. And then basically help them with some of those things that says, if you're taking out some of these foods that don't do well with you, what can we put back in? So it's almost like we want to send you to the grocery store with them so that you can shop with them and give them food advice and recipes, which you guys do. Um, and it's different than what we do. So it's an integral part of everything that goes on at the Roselle Center for Healing. But it's always the toughest part. You know, people always come in. They can, they can deal with the treatments. But the diet, that's the hard part because they they're have to be held accountable. Yeah, um, because I like to say that I like to, you know, empower the patient to make the changes that they need to make. And a lot of times, um, those patients, when they're um, in my office, they're ready to make that change because they they're tired of the way their life has been in the past, so, and they want to get better. They want to heal um, because what they have been doing in the past is not working. Yeah, and so, unfortunately, sometimes we have to hit that rock bottom right. to say, okay, now I don't have any choice. I have to do something different. Um, and diet is probably one of the last things that people are thinking of. They, you think about exercise all the time, or you think about I need to get more sleep, or I need to do stress reduction, but you're, you're not doing as much of, of the dietary changes on your own because there's not a lot of inform- information out there on there, and you're certainly not getting it from the conventional medicine side. So, Well, I think that there is a lot of information out there, but the patient, um, they don't have the knowledge of what's right for them. Right. And that's really like where they need a professional to help them steer them in the right direction. And that's where, you know, I come in. Right. Or you know, anybody at the Roselle Center so is helpful. We, when we bring things back to IBS in general, Obviously, if you have these symptoms like gas and bloating and pain and abdominal pain, you can't visually look directly into the digestive tract. But we do have certain diagnostic abilities that might be a little bit different from the conventional norm that beyond, say, even a blood test that we need to look at that really help diagnose what stuff, what's the next step. So what what does that tend to be and how is that a little bit different? Um, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, we do is food sensitivity testing. And that could be, um, you know, one of three different ways. You know, we have applied kinesiologist um, chiropractors. So one of the ways that we do it is with muscle testing. So um, if a patient would schedule their allergy testing with one of our docs, um, they'll come back to me for their next consult with a list of foods that they're sensitive to. So, you know, we'll work together to develop a plan as to how to exclude them, you know, for their um, in their diet and what foods to replace with or, you know, how can they manage without eating eggs for breakfast, you know, um, you know, um, menu plans um, in that area. Um, and then also, too, some other people may want to have, like, IgG testing or IgE testing. And IgE is basically, you know, the classic um, allergy where it's, um, you know, anaphylactic, where you need to carry around, you know, the EpiPen. But those allergies aren't really the ones that are causing the IBS. They're more or less the food sensitivities that would be... Um, um, shown through muscle testing or IgG testing. Okay. So there's blood testing options as well with that. So they're, which is very different than say when people think they're going to the allergen and they're doing the RAS testing, which is the, the whole bunch of shots and stuff right. where they're looking for those responses as well. So basically we're looking for gut allergies instead of a runny nose and uh, headache and stiffles. So, yeah. Yeah, and and also too, you know, I had mentioned earlier about you know eliminating dairy, you know, eliminating um, gluten, and you know that could be, um, you know, up the cause of some people's you know um, digestive discomforts, but other people it's not. So that's why the food sensitivity testing and the panels that we do are so beneficial. Right. Now, there's another test, too, that you're going to go over quite a bit, I think, at the lecture as well, too, where it's actually looking. We told people that you have to look at your stool, but you can actually test your stool as well, too, and look at 
basically the breakdown of what's in it that says a lot about gut health, not only just about what you're eating, but how is your gut actually processing? How is the digestive tract breaking things down? And then this is also very different than, say, the way uh, another doctor might look for, say, you know, you just traveled and now we have to look for parasites and anything else that's kind of in there as well, too. So can you speak a little bit on the basic, what we would call a, a stool analysis, essentially? Um, yes, a lot of times we don't lead with the stool analysis, but um, at some point, um, you know, when the patient just isn't seeing benefits, um it's, it's time to do the complete stool analysis. And what they would do is, you know, submit a sample of their stool, you know, to the laboratory. And this is something that they would do in the comfort of their home. You know, it's not something that they have to do, you know, at the Roselle Center. And, um, you know, the microbiome, that's really like um, a key topic. Um, you know, it's pretty hot. Um, you know, everybody's heard of it. Um, so, one of the aspects of the information that you're going to get back from the complete stool analysis or the CSA is, you know, what type of microbes, you know, do you have growing in the gut? You know, is it imbalanced? Um, do you have, you know, pathogenic flora? Do you have like an overgrowth of yeast? And that's one of the, um, the results that are going to be available to us um, to develop your treatment plan. And along with that treatment plan, um, they're also going to do a sensitivity. So they're going to um, let us know, you know, what antimicrobials um, are, or antifungals are going to be successful to kill the organisms Which that you have. Which is very similar when you have like something tested, um, you send in any kind of sample, like a tissue sample or um, lung sputum sample and stuff, and they try to figure out from a conventional standpoint what antibiotic might be the best one for that particular thing. Or if you send in a urine sample, if you have a urinary tract infection, okay, it's let's try this one versus that. So it's great because when we do the CSA, they're looking at more natural supplements that can help and that are very particular as far as the treatment of what they're seeing in the stool as well too. So it helps us give more information as far as what's going on. And when, when you talk about the microbiome, you're talking about the good bacteria versus Sometimes the bad bacteria or the good bacteria and the wrong ratios and stuff as well, too, because obviously we hear a lot, like you said, about what you call the microbiome and that balance, that fine-tuned balance. But at the same time, some of the sources that we're getting of good bacteria as far as food-wise aren't always the sources that we, we particularly need ourselves, right? So this helps to identify that. And then, um, you know, um, every person, um, depending on how much they weigh, they could have six to eight pounds of microbes in our gut. And, you know, if you have an imbalance, you know, you could have like four pounds of an imbalance, you know, which is really an incredible amount. And also, too, like the average person has ten times as many bacterial cells as um, human cells in the body. Yeah. So there's a lot going on in a little amount of space. Right. And so no wonder why it plays such an importance to our overall health as well, too. Yes. Now, one of the interesting things, and, and I had a preview, luckily, a couple weeks ago of Mary Jane's presentation. So it was great. Uh, highly recommend it. So make sure you're registering for this week's <laughs> lecture. Um, one of the things I think that's interesting is you help to break it down into five easy steps or called the five R's. And so... Tell me a little bit more about that and how that really starts to look at treating the whole body, but through also the digestive tract as well, too. Um, and regarding the five R's, um, the first one is remove, replace, re-inoculate, repair, and rebalance. And um, depending on the person, you know, sometimes we're going to do one step at a time. You know, with other people, we, we may link um, some of the um, steps and do them, you know, at the same time. But remove is, you know, you want to remove any food sensitivities. You know, it's as simple as that. And then the other thing, too, is if you do have pathogenic bacteria, you know, parasites, yeast, you want to remove that. And you want to remove it by using an antifungal or an antimicrobial. So because um, that is like usually the first step in the healing process. And so even with that, like you said, replaces the other one instead of everyone always thinking you're taking stuff out of the system, we have to be able to put good stuff into the system. Right. And what we would be replacing would be digestive enzymes, um, betaine hydrochloride, or bile salts. 
and we need the bile salts um, to help emulsify fats, you know, because sometimes that is a problem that people can't do. Um, and betaine um, hydrochloride, that's going to make the stomach more acidic so that we can activate enzymes that are going to digest proteins. And um, a large percent of our patients that come in to see us, they're on protein pup inhibitors, which is counterproductive to having those um, enzymes activated in your stomach. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so for those people that are on a PPI, um, increasing their ac- acidity is going to help with them digesting proteins. So what's interesting about that is you're talking about stuff that's happening up in the stomach where we're talking a lot about stuff that's happening in the lower part of the digestive tract. So really, as you think about it, it's one big tube from one end to the other. So if you're not treating and it's not functioning properly at the beginning, even from the mouth all the way down, then then there's an issue. And also, too, the acidic stomach is more or less um, sterilizing the food that we're bringing into our body, which could um, also help to kill some of the pathogenic bacteria that you may be ingesting. So you don't have problems lower down the tube. Mm -hmm. So, And what I think is interesting, too, is if you have someone who's already, say, been working with us for a while, and now they're starting to make those dietary changes, but, you know, stressors start to come up or they travel and stuff... There's things that you're going to start with with someone who's brand new to all this, and then there are going to be things that you're going to give more, say, like the maintenance type of patient to make sure that they're able to maintain these doing well and having normal bowel movements as well too, correct? Correct. So they can be slightly different. So even if someone's coming in and say they're maintaining they're maintaining their symptoms with that Band-Aid with medication, they still have that opportunity to kind of help heal the gut as well too and basically bring – better nutrition and and healing continue it basically right yes yeah so we're going to be talking more ibs we got a caller on the line we're going to get to as soon as we get back so hold on patiently and mary jane is going to be your lecturer this wednesday night october 18th at the Rizal center for healing in fairfax virginia make sure you register now basically online uh, at roselcare.com Or you can call the office at 703-698-7117. We'll be back in just a couple moments. This is Dr. Tom Rosell Live on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome back to Dr. Thomas Live. We are talking about IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and how to diagnose it, how to look at it from a natural perspective, and different options that you're going to have, which is going to be this Wednesday night's topic at the Rizal Center for Healing. Mary Jane, I just want to quickly let you finish up with the five R's, and then we're going to hit to the phones really quickly. So thank you, caller, for holding on. So what else is the, the key important things to take away from the five R's as far as when we come up with treatment protocols? Um, well, the third R would be, you know, re-inoculate, and that's where we talk about um, um, probiotics and prebiotics, and the prebiotics are basically the food for the probiotics, and we can do this either with supplementation or with fermented foods. And the last two um, of the five R's would be repairing the gut lining. And, you know, there's different nutraceuticals that we can recommend um, specific to the individual as to, you know, what's best to use. And then the last one is rebalance. And that could be a combination of sleep, exercise, and stress. And once again, we're all about the um, individual and, you know, what aspect you need to change in your life to rebalance. So like you said, individualized treatments, not just a cookbook style for everybody that has similar symptoms that are all then put into this IBS category to begin with. All right. We're going to head to the phones. Thank you, Anne, for holding on. Uh, How can we help you? Hi. I have IBS plus a a rectum that is uh, falling. (laughs) It's a prolapsed rectum. And I have trouble with uh, the stool in the mornings. I have constipation, and after having the stool, after a couple of hours, I have diarrhea. Mm, sounds. Was was the prolapse happening before the IBS, or has that happened because of it? Before. It was there before. Okay. So what's interesting is when you think of 
you know, like I said, one tube from the start to the stop when there's enough gut irritation and it doesn't even have to be when there's symptoms present, that strain, that pushing of either constipation or diarrhea can start things dropping. Basically, you see this with another way of the hemorrhoids even start to form as well, too. So one of the things that we want to look at is trying to figure out if there are certain sensitivity ones that are foods that we need to take out. What can we do to start with to start the healing process? And sometimes when it comes to prolapses, there are certain um, medical procedures that they can do to help it and, and stop it. Yeah. But there may be worth actually trying to do something more natural to kind of help the progression of it as well, too. Can you speak, Mary Jane, on on like kind of trying to find that cause and, and how that might even reflect back into the five hours? Um, um, yes. You know, what would be um, a really nice practice for you to do um, going forward is just like make a notation of like what you eat you know, for your th- meals and snacks and see if there's any link to any specific food or any specific food group to see if that triggers um, your symptoms that bothers you. Have you done that in the past? No. Yeah, I would say, you know, it's something that you could like start um, as quickly as today. Um, you know, it's five o'clock. You know, I'm sure within the next um, couple hours you're going to be having dinner. You know, so, um, you know, take a piece of paper and write down what you're going to have for dinner and um, and then keep a record as to, you know, when you go to the bathroom and do the same thing with tomorrow for breakfast. Do the same thing with lunch and dinner, you know, moving forward. And that's going to, you know, start to develop um, like a pattern. And um, if you come to um, the lecture on Wednesday, you know, you'll get more information. Or, you know, you're always welcome to schedule an appointment um, at the Roselle Center for Healing. And we could, you know, look at, you know, what you've discovered, you know, just in the first, you know, um, five days, you know, seven days of your food diary. Well, hopefully that gives you some information. And I and I I see a lot of patients that once that bowel moves, like she was talking about, that they start to have more of those constipation symptoms. And now that it's active, it starts moving more stools too. So that's a pretty common thing to happen, especially in the, if you're used to normal bowel movements in the morning, for that to happen as well too. So we see a lot of patients like that. So basically, even looking at the night before, what foods might be kind of still sitting in the system that's causing irritations as well too. Mary Jane, I'm going to have you quickly say and review what should people expect and who should be there on Wednesday night? Um, I would say, you know, anyone who um, is challenged with IBS, um, you know, or family and friends, um, you know, please, please come. Um, Also, too, that we're going to talk a lot about is um, food. And one of the best foods that we can eat to um, heal your gut is bone broth. And we'll talk about, you know, how to make it you know, at your home, as well as how to buy it commercially. You know, what are the best brands and the benefits? Thank you, Mary Jane, for being my guest. Hopefully we'll see you on Wednesday night. And uh, Dr. Rizal should be back in the studio next week. But for now, thank you for listening. And hopefully you'll find this recording if you missed it on the YouTube channel. Thanks and have a good night. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com yourself. This is Dr. Tom Roselle, author of Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. This is Dr. Tom Roselle. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Roselle Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. 
Neuromuscular dentistry is more than just teeth and gums. Temporomandibular joint disorder can be painful, and only a skilled neuromuscular dentist can diagnose and treat it. If you are in pain and suffering from TMD, call the neuromuscular dentistry experts at Soft Touch Dental Care. Learn more about TMD and how Dr. Michael Chung has successfully treated his patients. Call 703-319-6990 for a complimentary consultation or visit bestinsmile.com. That's 703-319-6990 or visit bestinsmile.com. Mmm.